Hello everyone and welcome back to Genetics Video Lessons. Uh, today we have Mr. Flash, Mr. Mini Lop out there. And of course he's checking everything out and moving stuff around. Typical for his playtime hour. Uh, today's lesson is uh, episode number four in our series. Uh, if you've not watched our videos on the previous uh, Locus Points A, B, and C, I recommend that you go back and do those uh, so that you can kind of catch up with where we are. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the D Locus Point. This is actually a really easy one to understand. And um, so when we're talking about the D locus, we're talking about what we call dilution. Uh, dilution is best described as, as um, taking a color and watering it down or modifying it to give us a different color. So for instance, uh, if we take a black color and we dilute that down, we're going to get blue. If we have a chocolate rabbit and we dilute that down, we get a color called lilac chestnuts, uh, going to be opal. Uh, your cinnamon is going to be uh, lilac agouti, or another term for that would be lynx. Uh, Color, dilution isn't going to change your color, uh, you know, from its its base. Its 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 base color is going to be the same. So it's still going to be a black or a chocolate rabbit. It's just what that what that dilution is. And every color uh, base color will have a dilution color. So the way that we determine that is by visually looking at a rabbit and, and being able to tell whether it's dilute, but by genotype, there are only two potential uh, alleles for the D locus. A capital D, meaning which is the most dominant, which is going to refer to no dilution, and a lowercase d, which is its recessive, and that will give us dilution, okay? <clears throat> So when we only have these two alleles available, we only have these three combinations available to us. Because remember, as we've talked about in other locus points, you must have a combination of two alleles at each locus point, one from each parent to each kit. Now, it doesn't mean that every kit's going to receive the same thing. That's why we have different colors in the same litter. Uh, and this is the same way. You can have blacks and blues in the same litter. It's just going to be dependent on which alleles are transmitted to the kit. Now, if I put two blue rabbits together, uh, both blue rabbits are going to have lowercase d's for their two alleles. That is all they can transmit, so that means my entire litter is going to be carrying dilute. Um, but you can see that it, it, it has to be two copies. Same as, at the, as with, with the B locus. To get chocolate, you must have two copies of that recessive allele for it to present in the color of the rabbit. Otherwise, uh, if it's just hiding behind recessively, you're only going to see your base color. You're not going to see the dilute color. So... That's a, a brief description on how this works. It's pretty easy going when it comes to to dilution. Um, but we're going to do, uh, I, I really don't, I've got a couple of rabbits we're going to do. We're going to do one that is a black rabbit, and then we're going to do a black dilution, uh, which is becomes blue. Um, the thing to note here is that Again, every base color is going to have a dilute, and there are so many colors out there, I cannot list them all here. Um, what you can do is you can certainly go to our website, flatwabbitrabbitry.com, and select the genetics page. Uh, and if you go down in there, you'll actually find a, a, a fairly l l decent list 
of the base colors and their dilutions of what they dilute to. Uh, that way you can kind of get an idea. So if somebody says, hey, I have this, this lilac rabbit, you, you automatically will know that, hey, lilac is, is the dilute of, of chocolate. A lot of this is going to be memorization. Um, some of it you, you'll be able to find online. But the main thing is, is just to realize that, that every color has a base color and then every color will have a dilution. So each base color will have a dilution and vice versa. And knowing that what it is that color is based on will allow you to fill in the B locus if you, if you know the, the, able to recognize the colors. And then, of course, uh, D is pretty simple and easy to deal with. Uh, but just stick with it. Uh, the E locus is coming up, and it's going to be kind of a difficult one uh, for us to, to work in. Uh, we will try to snag that one later today. Um, but I'm going to go grab a black rabbit, and we're going to draw its genotype from A through D. And that way we can determine uh, what its genotype is, and then we'll come back with a blue rabbit, and we'll do the same thing. Okay, so we have a black rabbit. This is a black Netherland dwarf. Um, who's being very, very good today. Yes, you're so good. We love you so much. Um, so when we're going to talk about the genotype for this particular rabbit, this is a black. Uh, uh, from what we've learned up to this point is that black is a self-based color. And so we're going to do two genotypes. And so black being a self-base and being the most recessive, we know that the fir our first allele or our first locus point is going to be two lowercase a's. He's obviously a black rabbit. So capital B. We don't know what he carries recessively at the, the B locus. C, as we learned yesterday, he's going to actually be full color, okay? And, and then when we get to the dilution part, we know that he carry, he's, that he's it, presenting no dilution and that he is going to be carrying a large D, and we don't know what's going on uh, at the second locus, uh, at this other allele, okay? We don't know what he's carrying uh, or what he could be hide hiding because, again, recessive traits generally are not going to uh, show up in, in what your color looks, what your rabbit looks like. Uh, this, this, this little boy here, you know, as we get into uh, the next locus point, you'll actually be able to determine after that uh, a good percentage of your rabbits based upon the first five locus points. So after we do the E locus, you're going to be able to do some of this at home, be able to look at your rabbits, and be able to determine what you have. Let me go grab a, a, a dilute rabbit, and I think I'm going to mix it up. I think we're going to go with, how about let's do blue otter. Okay, we've been using some cells the last couple of days, so let's, let's grab an otter and let's take a look at that. So what I did is I went and I got us a blue otter. She is a Netherland dwarf, and I, I kind of woke her up from her nap, so she's kind of like, what are you doing? But she is absolutely one of my favorite personalities to work with, and she's such a sweetie, and... We just love her to death. We love her to death. She's just such a great gal. And um, she just, man, I just love being able to sit with her. She's just so much fun. What we're going to do today um, but is just work with her genotype. Okay? And she is an otter. Um, she is a blue otter. Okay, now you can kind of see that difference in the coloring, okay? 
uh, it's it's just it's a blue rabbit. Now, if you look at our our blue yesterday that we had out uh, when we were talking about the sea locust, we had a blue rabbit out, and so you got to see what a full self blue looks like. This is a blue otter and what it'll look like. And so when we're talking about otters, we're talking about the tans patterns. Uh, so we know, based on what we've learned, is that AT is the representation for otters, silver martins, and, the, and those sorts of colors. Okay, she, she contains all those characteristics. We don't know what, what is being carried recessively just by looking at her. We also know that blue, again, is a black-based color. And we also know, uh, in this case, that she is also full color. But it's where we get to the D locus that things are going to be slightly different for our blue otter. We know that D is the most recessive and that it would have to have two copies present. So you can see how it will look on your genetics. And that way you can determine what's going on at, at D just by how the dilution presents itself. And so this is dilute. The black one we had out earlier, uh, that's going to be uh, carry no dilution. And the only difference between these two particular rabbits is this, that obviously she's dilute and is an otter. Only difference. So these two, these two points can take a black self and turn it into a blue otter. So just one change anywhere in the string like that can make all the difference in what color you have present in your rabbit. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tune in for the next locus point, which is E. Uh, we're going to be doing that one. I'm going to try to do it this evening if I'm just not too exhausted. Um, it, it will take us a little bit of time to get through it. That'll probably be another three-part episode. Uh, luckily, we're going to get this one all done in, in one part, so that, that'll save a little bit of work. And uh, we'll see you next time. You ready to go? You ready to go? Yeah. You so good.